All right, we are recording. Um, before, let, I guess, introduce yourself. I'll introduce myself, and then we'll ask Carly to say hi in the comments. Okay. Hi, I'm Elise Ben Shalom. I am known as the Marriage Minded Mentor. I love my work as a dating and relationship coach. Although many people are like, what do you do? Like, how do you help people? <laughs> you mean you won't set me up? I'm like, no, but I'll help you get married. So even though I might not set you up, yes, I might help you get married and find your person. And since we've had this amazing stay home order um, and everybody is just hanging out, lounging around in their little comfy, cozy spot, um, we decided to start doing events virtually because all my live events were canceled and I'm so sad. But the great news is that I was- Wait, wait, do you remember that? When we were planning the live event and we were like, is it going to cancel? Is it not going to cancel? Is it going to cancel? Is it not going to cancel? Doesn't that feel like months ago? It was two and a half months ago. <laughs> Doesn't it feel like way more? It, it feels like six months ago. It was like, what do we do? Should we make it virtual? Anyway, we took the leap and we made it virtual, not because we wanted to, but because that's what Hashem said. He said, now my friend is the time to make virtual events. So we did. And guess what? Instead of reaching like 50 or 80 people and only being in Brooklyn and only being for like one crowd or one type of person, we are live with you virtually reaching hundreds of people all over the world with all different Jewish backgrounds. So religious, secular, traditional, believe in God. I don't believe in God. You know, it doesn't matter. We are all here all together for one purpose, which is to help you uh, gain a few more skills to meet your soulmate. Cause that's what I love to do. I, I love doing that. I'm like a soulmate maker, you know, like a, a moment maker there. Um, and we're going to explore that tonight. And we have some pretty exciting things happening. So um, I will give you a heads up that in the chat box where you see that chat box down there or over there or whichever direction it is for you. See flirting, you got to get a little playful and fun. Like that's fun. If I'm just like, and in the chat box, it's just very boring. So in the chat box, you're going to see somebody listed as marriage minded mentor. And that is my new fabulous, amazing, wonderful Carly. She is our intern and she just started working for us and she's going to throw out questions and she's going to keep the conversation moving and it should be totally exciting and engaging. Oh, there she is. Oh, and she's on there as Carly. She's on there as Carly. Oh, I thought she was marriage minded mentor. <laughs> Oops, she can change it. We'll see. Um, and I am going to introduce you. I'm going to also let her introduce herself. But Sarah, who is, I, I don't even have words. I like, I'm speechless. Let's when hear I it. Don't Sarah. <laughs> I met Sarah several years ago, like four ish. And I met her because she was dating somebody that I was coaching. And he's like, you have to meet her. He's like, not just because I need you to meet her, but like, you need to meet her. And I was like, okay. And we met and I was like, Oh, she's cool. I like her. And then we just stayed in touch. And I've been following her on social media. And last summer I was like, you know what you're doing on social media? You know, that whole thing. And like, you're, you're amazing. I want to hire you. And she's like, no, I'm not like a marketer. And I'm like, no, you are. Yeah. And I've decided mm -hmm. I'm going to hire, I'm going to pay you. So just say yes. And she was like, okay, but I'm not this and I'm not that. I said, I know everything that you're not and I don't really care. So um, I turned her into the marketing Jewess, but really she is the fit Jewess and she's going to tell you a little bit about that. And I just love you. Oh, I love you back. <laughs> um, so I'm Sarah Kupfer and I founded Fit Jewess and I empower Orthodox Jewish women um, to develop healthy relationships with food, movement, their bodies through body positive and weight neutral health. Um, and I do coaching for my business. And I also help Aliza with marketing and um, social media you ish, ish. I don't know. Now we have Carly. So I'm really excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're bumping, but, um, we're bumping but, you off of that and putting her on social media. <laughs> Yeah, but the, the really exciting... No, Carly, you're still help. showing up as Carly. <laughs> she asked if it's fixed. <laughs> um, the really exciting part is I get to help Lisa with program development. And our brains are oddly, weirdly, very much in sync. It's bizarre. It is. It is. And I like that she reads and translates my brain and she like, she gets me. She really gets me. It's a pleasure. Like it's but anyway, Lisa will give me two sentences and then I create two beautiful paragraphs. And she's like, how did you know? That's my brain. Right. 
Lisa, I anyway, see you typing right. in. This is not a speed dating event. I'm so sorry if you thought that it was. It is a discussion and it's on the art of flirting. And we're going to get into that. We're going to talk about that. I'll give a little spiel. I won't bore you. It'll be like 10 minutes. And then we're going to get into Q&A and we are going to do what we call rapid fire Q&A where you ask the questions, you put the questions in the Q&A chat box. Not, I mean, not in the chat box, in the Q&A box and uh, we answer them. And a whole bunch of people sent questions in beforehand, so we have those as well, and, uh, and we're gonna run through this. So no, Can I just sorry, add one thing? dating. Um, so I've got the list of questions that you all sent in beforehand, some awesome questions in there. I will say, if you don't hear your question heard, um, either it's because Aliza already addressed it in what she's about to share, or it's content that we've addressed in a previous webinar. We have a list of webinars um, that you could still sign up for on the website. They're all available for replay, or it's just not related to this content, and it's still a really good question, but not for this specific webinar. So, um, Keep yeah. Keep your questions it. relevant to flirting yeah. and this topic for tonight. And again, just a reminder, please do not put your question in the chat box. If it does, it'll most likely get lost put it in the Q&A box that should be at the bottom of your screen. And Carly, if you see a question that comes into the chat box by mistake, can you just do me a favor and pop it into the Q&A box, please? And thank okay. you. Are we ready? We Yay. are ready. Okay, here we go. We are talking about the art of virtual flirting. So first of all, I wanna tell you that flirting for some people is ridiculously uncomfortable. And they're just like, Ooh, I don't like it. For other people, they're like, oh, I love to flirt. You know, like they're all in and you're like, ew, that's a little too much, you know? Everybody Wait, has what? their own. <laughs> Did you say something? You got it, very good. <laughs> um, and, and really what I want to talk about is you. Because the art of virtual flirting is, it has its own technique of how to flirt, how to do it virtually over the computer as opposed to being in person because we can only give so much of ourselves when we're over uh, video and not in person. You're not getting the full me. So we can only use, you know, like body cues from here up. It's not like your whole body posture that actually makes a difference. Um, and in general with flirting, if you are uncomfortable or you don't like it or it's not for you, then you're not gonna do it. But if you're so uncomfortable and you never do it, we are gonna pull you out of your comfort zone and you're gonna try new things, please. Tell me if you're willing to try new things. Put yes in the chat box. I wanna know you're willing to actually try new things. So flirting starts with you and you have to be willing to give it a shot. If you don't know what to do, we're gonna give you the what to do. Yes, 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 I see yes is popping in the chat box, thank you. Um, but the first thing that you need is you. You don't even need another human being. I don't care about anybody else in the world right now. We're not gonna talk about flirting with anybody else in the world right now. We're gonna talk about actually just practicing flirting with you. So I want you to imagine for a minute. Now you're gonna use your imagination, but later on you're actually gonna not use your imagination. You're gonna do it for real because I'm giving you homework. Your homework is gonna be that you're gonna be looking in a mirror. So now you're gonna imagine, sorry that I don't have like a handy dandy mirror here, right? See flirting, a little bit of playfulness. So you have your mirror here and you're looking at your face and I don't know, pretend, put your headphones in, pretend you're talking to somebody, but you're really talking to yourself here or talk to yourself. I like talking to myself and look at yourself in the mirror and have a conversation and say something and watch your face. Do you say things like this? Does your face look like this the entire time? Is your voice like this? Are you totally paying attention to yourself? Do you talk like this? Are you, do you have some movement? Do you have some energy? Now you're talking to a mirror, it might be boring, but pretend like you're on stage. Anybody who's an actor or in that field, you know what I'm talking about. You gotta rehearse your lines. You gotta say them over and over again. You've gotta prep your moment. You've gotta prep your mood, even if you're not feeling it. We don't care if you're feeling it. Pull it out from within you. You've got a feeling, you've had it once before. We're gonna use your brain to conjure that up again and pull it back and make it real. So what I want you to do is to start, step one is practice flirting in the mirror all by your lonesome. Do you bore yourself? If you bore yourself, for sure, you are gonna be boring that person across from you when you're actually in front of them or through a Zoom or video chat. 
Are you exciting? Do you entertain yourself? I know sometimes I've stood in front of the mirror and I'm like, oh, okay, like I'm going to smile. And I'm like, yeah, right, right. They're like, okay, maybe that's too much. Okay, wait, let me, let me put on my pose for a smile face. Like, okay, like that. Do I like my head like that? Like this, like this, like which side is my better side? Like examine yourself. This is what you have to work with. You've got your body, you've got your brains, you've got your heart, you've got your voice, you've got your intonation, you've got your lovely hand talk here, whether you're Italian or you're Jewish, or right? Like you're just moving your hands a lot. Some people are hand talkers and some people are not. I'm not telling you what to do and what not to do. I'm going to throw out a bunch of ideas and I want you to experience yourself. I want you to get comfortable with yourself. What? I can't hear you. You're just talking, but I don't hear you. <laughs> yep, because I was on mute because I was Good typing job. and I know that you don't like the typing sound. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> um, but what was I going to say? I wish I would have told everyone to bring a mirror and you could have like walked us, done a guided practice. Okay, well, next you time. that moment. If you're, <laughs> if you're close to a mirror, run and get it, get it and do it. And, and look at yourself. And it, you know what? Wait a minute. Stop. You have a Oh, no, they can't see themselves. Only I can see myself in this. Yeah. Okay, well, okay. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a tool right now. The tool is that they when you're you are, all at home, that's true. You're probably yeah. sitting in your room on your bed next to the mirror or, you know, close enough, but okay. But but it's not really about a mirror because I'm going to give you tools for online because this is all about virtual flirting. So online right now on my screen like this, I'm in the upper, I'm pointing to it like this. See how my finger's pointing to it? So my camera's right here, but my face is right here. So if I'm not sure how I'm coming across to everybody else, I don't look at Sarah because I don't want to see her face because we don't care what she looks like because we're not trying to impress her with our flirting, right? We're not trying to impress anybody with our flirting. We are trying to draw out our natural selves and our flirting selves. Now, on a scale of one to 10, you're going to throw this in a chat box. How well do you do flirting? One, like I'm lousy. It's not my thing. 10, like Shazam, I'm on this just to learn a few new tricks. Ah, 11, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> 11, way to go. Zero, six, nine. Okay, we're all over the spectrum here. Six, one, yeah. six, four. One, five, six, ten. Great. For ten, I want to know why are you on here if you're already a ten. <laughs> okay, so I think that was all, a negative ten. Oh, negative ten. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. So if you um, if you're on here and you're like I'm a nine or I'm a one, I don't care where you on you are. We all, even if you're a zero, the spectrum has you have the ability to move. You have the ability to grow. You have the ability to change should you choose to accept the mission. And the mission is to increase your connections with other human beings. What's flirting really all about? It's really all about connecting with other people. It's helping them to make them feel good about themselves and helping you to feel good about yourself so that your real self shows up your fun self shows up, your playful self shows up, your enjoyable side shows up. If you're one of those people that are like, but Lisa, I'm not so fun, I'm not so playful, I'm a little bit more mellow, uh, maybe I'm a little more intense, maybe I'm direct, like I don't use those kind of playful words to describe myself. Okay, so the meter is like low for you. So all we're gonna do is inch it up. So if you're a zero, I'd like you to be a one by tomorrow. You know, if you're a one, we're gonna get you to a two. If you're a two or three, all you need to do is take one step forward. So now you're like, great advice, Elisa. Yeah, that's why I'm here, because I knew I needed to take a step forward. What am I supposed to do? So you can have, I, yes. Can I just interrupt for a second and add, add a comment to the mirror exercise? Because yes, I know yes. every time I've heard mirror exercises, I would basically roll my eyes. Um, but I just want to say, like, as someone who does a little bit of public speaking, um, the first time, actually, this was for a video um, that I had to submit. When I talk about things that I'm passionate about, I basically talk like this. And I didn't realize that I look like I'm really mad or pissed off. <laughs> and it, I... The, what I'm talking about, passion can still come through even if I have a little bit of a smile on my face. 
Um, and it took me seeing the, the video to be like, oh my gosh, that's what it looks like. That's not how it's supposed to look. And that's not what I'm feeling. What it looks to other people, the way it looks to other people about what I'm feeling, that made no sense. You get what I'm saying? Wasn't actually how I was feeling. And so really taking the time to look in the mirror makes such a big difference. It's not about um, you'll, you'll probably talk about fake it till you make it, but it's not even about faking it till you make it. And it's not about, you know, putting on a face that's not you. It's just about being cognizant of how other people see you. And is that really the impression that you're trying to give? Yes. Thank you. So, so let's talk about everything that we have to use and what flirting is all about. So flirting is all about increasing my connection to you and the way to do that is by making you feel comfortable, making you feel good, making you feel relaxed, at ease, making you feel connected to me. And when you start to feel all those things, you, you start to notice that somebody's feeling connected to you and then there's a little bit of an energy and a vibe going on that we don't exactly know what to call it, but we don't have it with everybody. And it starts to feel different. And you're like, oh, there's something happening. And, and all of a the sudden, there's something that exists there and you don't know what it is. And, and it becomes this flirting, which really is just all about, I want to connect with you. And the way to do that is by just being in that moment with you, making you feel good, making me feel good and confident, not being in my head, not thinking about, oh my gosh, did I say that? Did I do that? Oh, that was the wrong thing. Oh, uh, oh, I should sit like this. Oh, do I have something in my teeth? Do I, oh, oh, I, oh, I'm uncomfortable with myself. I, right? Like get rid of all of that. Get comfortable in your own body. Get comfortable being with who you are. If, if you're not, like me, right? And you're like, oh, I wish I was like her, whoever the me is, not me, me. But you're, I'm not like her. We don't want you to be like anybody else. We only want you to be the best version of you. That is it. That is all we are asking from you is to be the best version of you when you show up on a date. Because nobody else is looking for me or the, any other me's. They're looking for you. Your soulmate is looking for you and the best version of you. So if you pretend to be anybody else, we have a problem because it's not going to work. So what you need to do is have that mirror handy, practice some of these things, and think about what's really you. And sometimes something's not you, but you want it to be you. So you like own it. You make it yours by practicing and doing it. And then you're like, oh, that is mine. I am comfortable with that. I became that because I wanted it. So what are some tools? Some tools, let's talk about our physical body. Some tools are our hands. So when you're moving, right? Like you could see my hands coming closer or further in video or in person. There's like a connection there that I'm not standoffish. I'm not like way back here. I'm not like, oh yeah, I'm not. <laughs> I'm open when my arms are reaching out and I'm connecting, like I'm open to building something with you and you can see it physically. That is a nonverbal way of flirting and connecting. When I don't just keep my head very still and I just talk like this and it's a little robotic, when I have movement or fluidity to my body movements, to my head perhaps, or, or turning my head in a certain angle or a certain way, you know, sometimes like people sit and they look like this, you know, like, how does this feel? How does that feel? more engaged, like I'm listening, like I'm really curious, right? How does this feel? You know, like, or, or like, if you're like, hmm, like, look at yourself, make, <laughs> pose a little bit and just get in the moment. And men, women, yes, men don't be sitting there like this the whole time you're talking to her on a Zoom call. I don't care if you're cold and you're like sticking your hands in your armpits, uh-uh-uh-uh, freeze on do your arms let your arms hang free have them talking don't have them crossed in front of you like this either not acceptable um don't be sitting there like this that's bored that's engaged do you see the difference yeah a hair of a difference so we want to make sure that you are engaging somebody with your physical body because this is over zoom we're not talking about conversation over a telephone. Um, if we are moving to verbal, then we need to make sure that there's inflection in your voice. So when voices are monotone and people talk like this, after about two minutes, my brain shuts down because I don't want to hear you anymore. So Lisa, if <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't even I don't even know if that was monotone. <laughs> Whatever it was, it was what good. 
but what you want to do is have inflection in your voice. So we want the voice to go up. We want it to go down. We also want it to go louder. And we also want your voice to go softer. You want to make a point. You might not make a point by digging in. You might be like, hmm, you know, let me think about that. I'm not sure what you, that's a really good question. As opposed to like, oh, that's a good question. Like create a moment with your voice, with the tone, with the words. So flirting can do with the tone of the voice. And now we're gonna also get into the language that you use. So if you're not so creative with your language, and like, again, if this is not your thing, then I'm not gonna expect you to be so super creative with your language. Use your language, but change your tone. If you're very flowerful and creative with your language and your tone and your body movements, and if you're a little bit too much, cut it back, knock it off. Cause then you end up being one of those people. Know? How does someone know when it's too much? Usually people tell you, they're like, oh, <laughs> wow. You had a lot of energy on that Zoom call. You know, like, I mean, a lot of energy. <laughs> you know, like they're, like they're, trying, they're trying to tell you, you were super annoying and you were driving me nuts. Um, you might not exactly know if you are too much, but if you're always the life of the party and you're always the one there and you're the loud and proud and whatever, tone it down. Like go from a 10, if you're a 10, it might serve you to try being an eight. It's not always great to be a 10 in everything. So it's not fabulous always to be a 10 in this area because it might be too much. When you are too much, what happens? You do not leave enough space for the other human being. And so you're a 10. So maybe they would also be a 10 on their own, but with you, they're like a two. So now you don't actually draw them out because you left no space for them. So you could meet in the middle. So if you want to draw somebody out and you're too much and they're not doing it, maybe you should try to cut it back a little bit. Go to an eight, go to a seven, go to a six. Draw yourself to the middle and try to draw them in a little bit more. If you think like, I'm Shazam, I'm amazing on this call. I'm doing everything right. They're doing everything wrong. They're never getting it right. I'm never meeting the right people. So either A, yeah, you're meeting the wrong people. Sorry, try somewhere else. Or B, tone it down. Make space in the conversation for somebody else to engage you. Make, make so time you saying, for them to do that. Are you saying that flirting is not just about putting your, your best foot forward but it's, and, and showing off your skills, but that it's really about connecting with the other person and, and um, using their energy to gauge how much or how little to put out? A yeah. Thousand, a thousand percent. Yes. Wow. Yes. It's not, it, to a zero, it's about your skills. I don't care about your skills. I care about your affect. I care about how you come off to somebody else. If they don't walk away be feeling like he or she, amazing. Like, wow, I want to get to know them. If they're not thinking that, and even if, they, even if they're, you're not for them, they should be thinking, wow, totally not for me, but Shazam! Like, who could I set him or her up with? This person is wonderful. Wow, what a light. What an energy. Um, what, what a moment. I see here, do you have some lines to help you with flirting? This is tricky. We'll get into this. Maybe somebody write it down. Put it in the Q&A box, please, because we need to come back to that. That is a whole topic unto itself. Um, the short answer is you've got to come up with your own lines because if I give you lines, it will not be natural and it will not be you. It'll be me and you will sound like not yourself and it'll come off weird, but I could teach you about it. So, okay. So that's flirting. Hold on. So when do we give all of this energy, voice, language, tone, nonverbal, verbal communication, a style, a, a try? How do we know when to do this with somebody? So first of all, in the very beginning, this should come off from the get-go. This, it's not like you're waiting for a moment like, I'm going to tell a joke. I'm going to tell a joke. Oh, my turn. Okay, okay. Here's my joke. Quick, say a joke. <laughs> get a line. No. This is from the first moment. We meet you and you're like, hi, Sarah. How are you? Oh, so nice to meet you. Oh, you know what? Oh, those, oh, those ear pods. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to compliment her looks. We're not going to talk about anything like, oh, do you have those late, late, what are they? AirPods? What did I say? AirPods? <laughs> laughing at myself. <laughs> AirPods. Those AirPods. Wow. They're great. How do you like them? Great sound, right? I'm talking about AirPods, but I'm, I'm so engaged. Like, I'm so excited about her AirPods. She could almost become excited about AirPods. And like, who cares? They're just AirPods. What? Like, oh. AirPods? <laughs> I you should just know, I love my AirPods so much. I got to leave that to buy a pair. 
Yeah, because I was never clear on these webinars. And nobody <laughs> could, hear, they could hear you better than they could hear me. <laughs> Is there okay. Ooh, I'll so, leave that. How do you like your <laughs> AirPods? Um, I think they're fabulous, but I'm so afraid to lose them that I'm only saving them in my special room when I do the recordings. I won't walk around my house with them. <laughs> That's hilarious and really, really smart. I smart, really right? Smart. Like I've got yeah. kids in life and I forget where I put things. Like there's yeah. like I need I need one of those tracking devices on it if it leaves this room. Um actually no, I thought of getting if anybody knows of those like around the neck like carry it with you kind of things, like I need a special one. I was gonna like knit one, but I don't have time for all that nonsense. So um, um I could okay. ask my future mother in law to knit you whatever you want. She like spends her days knitting little shoes for dolls. They're adorable. Okay, sold. Um, okay. okay, so flirting. So when are you going to do this? Immediately, all the time. And by the way, flirting, fl I, I don't like the word flirting. I just have to tell you, I have an aversion to the word flirting. The Why? word flirting has such a negative connotation because it kind of, it kind of has like a little, I don't know, like edgy, like negative, trampy kind of thing. Like, oh, you're flirting. Like it just, it gives me the ick. Like even putting yeah. the name, you know, the art of virtual flirting on the flyer. I was like, oh, this is, this is a little like, she was like, wrong. should, we? Like, and I was should like, we, should oh, we not? Should we, should, should we, we not? Should we not? <laughs> so I put it on there because I wanted people to know exactly what I was talking about. Cause if you don't say the word, you don't know what it is. Um, but really flirting isn't flirting. Flirting is the purpose behind flirting is connection. I want to connect with you. I want you to connect with me and that's it. So you can even have a connection with anybody in your life and you can use these tools to have a connection. And it's not really about flirting. It's actually, I, I tricked you. You came to this webinar for flirting and I'm actually going to teach you how to just connect with people because true flirting is really all about a connection. And you know, what's so funny. That's what I'm passionate about. Yeah. I'm just thinking like I, I reviewed the questions that came in and sort of categorized them. And there were a lot of questions asking about flirting specifically, you know, with the more right wing community. And I know growing up in the yeshivish community, flirting is definitely a word that just, you know, we don't really use it. Um, right. And it's interesting because it's everything you're saying up until now, what you just said is it's not about making a non-kosher thing kosher. We're not looking to like kosherize the flirting the way that most people use it. We're just learning, you know, good old fashioned connection skills. Right. And we're redefining flirt. Well, the definition of flirting is a good one. Actually, it's just the word that has a negative connotation. Yeah. You, you can Google it. Up, right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wrote it down. I forgot I was going to have it ready for you, but good. You'll, you'll pull it up. Um, it has a very, yeah. Behave as though attracted to or trying to attract someone, but for amusement rather than with serious intentions. Okay, so that's why it has a negative connotation because it's really meant for like, a, like I'm teasing you, I'm playing with you, I'm not really into you, I just want to know if I can get your attention. That's why it has a bad connotation and that's why it's a bad word and see, I shouldn't have used it on the flyer. So, sorry about that, but. But you're here, so we did something right. <laughs> no, but it's really, but it's really all about a connection with somebody, and that's why you're here. You're here because you want to make a connection with somebody, and whatever you're doing hasn't worked up until now, and you've been meeting all the Mister and Mrs. Wrong, so it's not your fault. Um, you just haven't met the right people yet, unless they're a mystery in your history, and that's a whole other story. But really this is about making a connection. And I want you, in addition to the mirror exercise, that's exercise number one, homework and exercise number two is to start making a, making a connection with everybody in your world. I don't care if it's through social media. I don't care if it's through phone calls. I don't care if it's through video Zoom chats. I don't care if it's about dating. I don't care if it's your mother, your sister, your father. Your... Connect, 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 connect learn how to connect with people. <laughs> I, sorry, I have to interrupt because I love Wikipedia's um, mm -hmm. definition. Carly just posted it here. Behavior involving spoken or written communication, as well as body language by one person to another, either to suggest interest in a deeper relationship with the other person, or if done playfully, 
playfully for amusement. And by the way, I just want to say amusement is not either a bad thing. Like amusement is not I'm taking advantage (laughs) of you. Amusement is we're sitting at a Shabbos table together and we're enjoying conversation. Yes. Yes. That is a solid definition. Thank you, Carly. Way to go. Um, it's really good. And that's what it's about. And you should be doing that and practicing that with everybody in your life, because I'm going to tell you a, a secret. It's a secret. See, you like got quiet. It sounded all exciting, right? <laughs> a little playfulness here. I'm teaching you all the techniques. Secret. Here's the secret. What you're learning now. I mean, you could use it for dating, but you're going to get married and you could use it for your marriage, but you could use it in your entire life. This will get you a job. This will help you keep a job. This will help you make friends with your coworkers. This will help you build a relationship with that icky person in your family that you never want to talk to, but you know you have to make peace with, right? This is here to help you make your entire life better. You thought this is all about dating. And I tricked you and you came to learn about life, how to make your life fabulous. (laughs) <laughs> so we're all about doing deep, awesome, amazing things. So that's what this is all about. And okay, so now you know what? I'm going to just like whoosh, take, take a quiet moment. And I think we should transition into the Q&A portion and give like a full almost hour. We're going to go till 930 with Q&A and it's going to be rapid fire, like question, minute answer, question, minute answer. So we can get through as many things as possible. And oh, um, solid. yeah, and I'm I wondering, add- yeah. So go for it. I was just going to say, I wanted to add a comment that something popped into my head as we were chatting. And I realized that we flirt a lot. Um, Sometimes when we're on the phone alone, just talking business, very often in webinars, um, a lot when we do in-person events, like me and you, I'm saying. Oh, 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 I was eating. Yeah. (laughs) And I just realized like, We use it typically in like romantic situations, but really it's something we do in our everyday life, which so much fits into what you were saying about connection. And I also want to just throw this out as a potential idea for people to make note of how, aside from the mirror exercise, make note of how you're interacting with people on video, people you are a hundred percent comfortable with your friends, your family members. So many people now are FaceTiming and Zooming. Make note of like, Instead of being totally present in the moment for the one time, I'm going to tell you, take a step back for a second and just observe how you guys are interacting and make note of it to pull into future um, conversations with dates. Because I think that just the whole concept of a date could, could put on pressure and make you a little bit uncomfortable, which is totally normal. But know that all those tools are most likely already in you and you're familiar with them. It's just a matter of taking this practice over into this practice, even if we call it something else. I love it. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. Um, Yeah, it's a good point. I'd also be wary of using sarcasm with anyone you haven't met actual face-to-face there's too much guesswork in a backfire i'm Ooh. totally a sarcasm backfire on me <laughs> <laughs> so, solid advice amy thank you yes sarcasm is a whole nother thing for the people that love sarcasm and you're like i'm looking for my sarcastic soulmate should be a whole group is there like a facebook group there should somebody should start a sarcastic soulmate <laughs> you have my permission to use sarcastic soulmate and just throw it up there and and get it going for the people that love it um but for other people, they're like, oh, wait, what'd you say? And then they get offended. So yeah, don't use sarcasm. Or, um, or they don't even and realize, and then it just gets awkward. And then as soon as you have to start explaining something, it's, it's wrong. And it's not that they did anything wrong by not getting it. So yeah. Right. All right. Let's go with um, question number one is, what is the right balance of being formal versus friendly when you're dating? So it really depends on your circles. If you come from more formal circles, you should start out formal and then ease into the friendly because that's going to be normal for you. Um, I would tell I would encourage you to bring friendly in a little bit sooner, not at the very beginning, if formal is normal for you, but bring it in a little bit sooner than you're used to. And that will help to get the momentum of the relationship going. If you come from more friendly circles, sometimes friendly actually is like friend and you end up accidentally friend zoning people. So you might want to do the reverse and introduce a little bit of formality into the relationship to stabilize that, wait, hey, this, this is a relationship. This ain't no friendship. This is something real here. And do the reverse. So you have the, the 
the, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The formal a little bit sooner and, and the friendly, you know, go cut a little bit back, you know, on that. Makes sense. Um, how do you create chemistry and attraction virtually? So I really think it's the same. Like if you meet me in person and you meet me here and some people have only spoken to me over the phone and they know my voice. And, and when you meet me, I think I come off the same. Like you see that I'm playful and fun and engaging and, you know, hand motions and think this is me. So I want you to really be very similar. On video, the trick is to actually be you because you're more likely to be a muted, softer version of yourself and not fully show up because, hey, I'm at home, I'm casual, like I'm just sitting in my room here, like this is my, you know, like I, I don't feel like I'm at an event, I don't feel very formal, I'm not standing up tall, upright, I'm sitting down. So you, you start to actually feel less energized. So what I'd like you to do is to infuse yourself with a boost of energy, like do whatever you have to, drink a cup of coffee, take a caffeine pill, <laughs> get yourself moving so that you can get your blood pumping. You could even, by the way, go for a run around the block or get your heart rate up because if your blood is pumping faster, then your brain is going to be moving quicker and you're going to have a little bit more energy to do something. I don't want you to come to a huh. virtual meeting kind of de-energized where the blood is flowing through your veins very slowly. Like don't do a meditation and come on a Zoom unless you're joining like a, the Zoom meditation dating site, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so just just go like run around the block, do, do exercise 30 minutes, walk briskly, exactly. Jump on your treadmill, run in place. I don't care, you don't go up and down your stairs. You don't have, you can't go outside and you don't have a treadmill, no problem. Um, you could take a shower and like refresh yourself. That's a good one because actually like you would take a shower before you go out to an event and put yourself together. Um, I, I do tell people like, I don't actually care if you're in your PJ bottoms with your virtual self. Somebody said like, no, but you don't feel formal. I said, do what you want, but if it doesn't bother you, it doesn't bother me as long as you're, um, looking good. And yes, Amy, good. 15 jumping jacks. <laughs> Love it. Is it Get your blood pumping. So I used to do. No, this you have to read the, the second half. Oh, of I didn't the rest of, What did it say? <laughs> what did it say? To beat your, do it between clicking join meeting and try to beat your camera from turning on before you're done. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about like my date camera on. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it might be a little bit much. <laughs> We're not talking about yeah. flirting like that, right? Yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> maybe 10 minutes before, but we want to get you moving. So when I was in high school, I remember once I had a speech and I was very nervous about going up and speaking. And I forgot, I was so nervous. I forgot all my notes in my locker and I ran back to my locker and I ran back to do this, the speech. And my, I was like huffing and puffing. I took a, a minute to calm myself down, but because my blood was pumping and flowing, I got up there to talk. I was nervous, but I didn't even have time to be nervous because my breath was already actually moving at a good pace. I spit the words out and it came out better than I had ever done a speech. And I was like, Oh, Shazam. All I got to do is run around the room before I get up to speak and I'll be fine. Like, excuse me. Like I'll be right back. And it works. So get your blood pumping before you get on um, a call and, and get yourself moving. Don't zen and chill out and yoga-ish. I feel like I want to try that the next time I speak, but I just, when I'm under that pressure, I don't see myself going for a run, but that's probably why I should try it. You don't need to do a run. You can do jumping jacks. You can go up and down your stairs. Whatever, whatever. You yeah. Can, yeah. Yeah. And the good news is because you're not going to be in person with them, we don't care if you sweat. <laughs> It makes no difference because probably won't really be able to see you or smell you, so it's fine. See, a little bit of humor. See, this is that's playful humor. That's funny. You're not going to say that on a date because that's a little bit too far. But <laughs> I could say it with you because, you know, we're having fun here. Because Aliza's not, you know, she's married. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. There was something I wanted to say, and I'm totally blanking. So, oh, well, next. Um, should the girl be the first to start flirting if the guy doesn't and doesn't mean he's not as interested if he doesn't start the flirting? Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Before we get to that, someone asked if you could just clarify what you meant by formal because before you, you talked about, um, friendly slash flirting versus formal. What's right. a little bit more formal? If, if they're not used to formal, um, that's a really good question. Throw your ideas in the chat box. 
let's do some group think. Um, what is more formal? I mean, we don't want it to be so friendly that I just think you're a friend. I want to know, you know, like that you'd like if, you know, we weren't in Corona times, I'd love to take you to my favorite restaurant, which is this, right? That's a signal verbally that you'd actually like to take me out. And like, we're not just friends hanging out. Um, I'm trying to think of, of specific examples. If anything pops up, tell me. Um, you want them to know, you want them to know like you're enjoying talking to them and hanging out and like, not just like a friend, like I, like, this is nice. Like, you know, if you're, you're in the moment there, there's something nice. I think, I think it's just, I think we use friendly and flirting synonymously. And I don't think they are in the context of this conversation. I think friendly is a lot more casual and relaxed and formal is a little less so. And I think you can flirt in both situations. Correct. Okay, so let's get back to that question, right, which so is... So the question is, should the girl be the first to start flirting with a guy doesn't? So first, and if he doesn't, yes. does it mean he's not interested? No. The short answer is yes. No, no. to which yes. part? <laughs> yes, you should start flirting, and no, it doesn't mean he's not interested. Either he maybe doesn't know how to flirt, or he's not good at it, or he's so interested that he's so nervous that he's speechless. My husband tried to tell me that that's really what happened on our first date, and that's why he didn't really talk a lot. Like, I literally talked the whole time. I left the date, and I'm like, gosh, I don't think that went very well. <laughs> like, I had to keep the conversation going. Like, I think I like him because I knew him from before, and I met him. But, like, man, he didn't talk at all. He probably is not interested at all, and I couldn't have been more wrong. He was like, no, he's like, everything you were saying was so in line with what I was, you know, with me, and I was, like, speechless. And I was like, stop, that's not true. And he's like, no, really. And I was like, I don't believe you, but it's okay. We're married. It worked out. But I didn't think he was interested because he was speechless and I was being my schmoozy, friendly, casual, you know, flirty, engaging, you know, caring, get to know you kind of self. And, and he just was not like that. So thank God we got to our second date because I almost, I almost called him after the first date. Here's my plan. I'm driving home because I happened to be in, in his neighborhood where he was and I'm driving home after Shabbos and, or not, or Shabbos. Yeah, after Shabbos was our first date. And I'm, I'm like getting ready to call him as I'm driving. No, you shouldn't call and drive. But I was getting ready to call him. And I'm like, well, I'm, and I was going to say like, what was that? Like, huh? Like, you like me? You don't like me? Like, what's the story? And I was, I was getting ready to call him. And then a friend like called me and I was like, okay, God, I got the sign. I won't call him. Okay, whatever. So I let it go. But the truth is I almost missed the signal there. Like he wasn't talking and it doesn't mean that he wasn't engaged. It just meant meant something else and we don't know what it means, but don't guess. If you don't actually know what it means, don't pretend to make up another story about what it means because you could be wrong. I think really, really often we project our, not just feelings, but how we our fears, act, our behaviors. Fears also, but I think we project our behaviors onto other people. So if I was hit in his situation and I didn't flirt, that would mean X, Y, Z. So therefore he is in that situation and he didn't flirt. So he must yes. not X, Y, Z. Yes. And that's not true. Correct. Agreed. 100%. All right. All right. Um, question coming in from the chat box. I dress like a, I dress like a real date for Zoom, you know, business casual. I've had dates not dress up, fix their hair, wear huge distracting glasses. I don't know. I always wear huge distracting glasses. Um, how do I get excited to flirt and be playful, teasing, and compliment when I'm not getting the kind of first impression that I expect? So the problem is you're not getting the feedback from the other side. The other side is like a little like this, and you're like trying to make something happen, and you feel like you're, you're I think talking it's to a more, wall. I think it's more like I came dressed up for a date. They and you, you didn't make an effort. And so it's like kind of hampers that let's flirt feeling. You got two options. You can either get over your thinking and just start flirting and see if there's something there or decide that that person's not for me. Like, hey, if you're not coming all dressed up, then I don't want to talk to you. Um, I'd tell you to go with option number one, which is like, just assume the good, assume who knows what happened. They maybe had a rough day or maybe they're just a casual person or maybe it just, they've been on three Zoom calls this week and they couldn't pull it together for this one. Like we, again, don't, don't get all judgy. If you stop something before it starts, it'll never start. You'll never, ever get to reaching your goals. It'll never work. So don't stop it before it starts. Give something an opportunity. After you talk to them for 20 minutes and if you're like, 
that was lousy. Okay, Lahitra, adios, see you later, bye-bye. Not for me, mm-hmm. but at least assume from the beginning. Here's what I want you to do. Mental game. Assume there is potential. Period. That's it. You assume that there is potential between you and the person that you're talking to. You're there for a reason. They're, they're there for a reason. Assume there's potential. Pretend like there is. And if, if it's not going to work out, this is your most fabulous opportunity to practice connecting with somebody because we don't Ooh, care what happens like because it. you're not for me, but I'm going to make it the best time for you. And it's not, it's not um, leading somebody on and it's not a problem. Like we're trying to make it a good time. We're trying to make a connection. So it's not anything negative. So don't think that it's anything negative and know that um, maybe something will come out of it. Maybe nothing will come out of it. And at least you'll have had an experience where things, you know, had potential and you did your best like a good workout, you know? (laughs) All right. Next up. When do you express interest in a guy? Yeah. So for some people, it happens right away within the first five minutes, there's something going on and there's a connection. Um, For some people, it doesn't happen until like the seventh date. (laughs) There's the whole range. Uh, If you don't give people and you don't give guys a little bit of something to go on, then you'll never know if anything is there. And if you don't show interest, uh, if like, here's the fear. If I show interest and they don't like me, then I'm going to be rejected. Yep. Every single time that's going to happen. Okay. We good with that? That's just normal. I show interest. They don't like me. They're going to reject me. Great. It's not meant for you, but you did the right thing because there's going to be that time where you show interest and they like you back and then it works. So you can't like hide yourself and sneak away from all of the rejection. Rejection will happen approximately 99.9% of the time in your dating and 0.01% of the time it'll be the person that it works with. But the rest of the time, it's going to be a fail. That is a beautiful success. Every single failure is a beautiful success because you were actually trying to meet the right person. And it's supposed to be that way. Dating was made, you were made to fail every time except the right person. Otherwise, what's, what's going to happen? You're going to marry the first person you connect with and they could be wrong for you because like, hey, it just worked. It's not supposed to work with almost everybody in the world. And that's why it is super important when you meet somebody that it works with or it kind of works with or it sort of works with, we don't turn away. We don't look away. We look them dead in the eye and we make something happen or we do our best to make something happen. I know 99%. So I hear 99% is depressing. 99% should excite you because I if got I told so excited you when you told me that I remember when you told me that and I like held on to it so tight for the rest of my dating experience because it, it didn't every time something didn't work out. It wasn't like, Oh, I failed again. It was like, good. That means I didn't meet the right person. That means it could be the next one. I didn't do anything wrong. They didn't do anything wrong. We're both doing exactly what we're supposed to do to bring us forward to the next person. Right. So here's the other option. I don't want you to be depressed about this. I want you to know what the reality is. And I want you to be excited about this. Here's the other option. Let me just tell you, 99% of the time, you're going to meet fabulous, amazing people. Every single person that you meet out of a hundred people, 99 are going to be perfect for you. Only one is not. Now pick your soulmate. Are you kidding me? 99 people that I have to choose from to choose the right person. And each one is better than the next. You'll go insane. You will never, ever, ever make a decision. How could you make a decision with so many amazing choices? So Hashem does you a favor. God does you the biggest favor in the world. He's like, look, only a few people you're really going to like that are really going to also like you back. Everybody else, not going to work. And I'm doing you a favor so that you don't have to choose from everybody in the whole world. Now, if you have very open criteria and you like many different kinds of people, you might find so many more options, but you're not going to find 99, but you might find so many more people appealing. And if you're super picky and super narrow and you've got like exactly, you know what you want. Okay. So like, you're going to look at most of the world and be like, holy smokes, there's nobody here for me, but there is, there's your one body here for you. There's your somebody here for you. That person exists. They are in this world and they're the only person that you need. And everybody else, it should be a gift that it didn't work with them. Awesome. 
Um, I'm going to throw in a question, but I'm also going to remind you we're doing rapid fire questions. Okay, sorry, I'll go faster. <laughs> I'm not going to turn on the timer because everyone's going to be like, why is her phone keep going off? Um, but yeah, let's, let's try to keep it moving. But I'm going to throw in a question, a follow-up question to that one. I have heard this ridiculously dumb idea and I'm blown away that people actually believe it, but there is this belief that guys should not express interest in a girl or else she will not be interested in him. Can you just tell us where this comes from and how dumb it is? And please don't do it. Well, <laughs> right. So it's like the art of the chase. So if I show you that I'm fully interested in you, you might run the other way because that's just not super appealing. There has to be like this give and take and this like, it's got to be reciprocal. And so if you're all in before I know if I'm all in, that makes me super uncomfortable. So we don't want you to be all in before somebody else is all in. You got to leave space for them to come in without you like being like all okay with it. Um, there should be an amount of like interest and curiosity. Curiosity is a great word with interest and curiosity. And I want to get to know you and, and I keep having phone calls with you and I keep having zoom meetings with you. If somebody is still in contact with you, it means that there's potential. When do you know that they're not interested in you is when they actually are like, Hey, no, I'm not available. Nope. Not available Tuesday night either. Yeah. Next week, really busy on my calendar. Like you can't get a date for two weeks and like, bye-bye. So you really want to balance your interest where you're showing interest and you're engaging, but you're leaving enough space for somebody else in the world so that they can come into your life and engage you. And then there's this back and forth and back and forth. Awesome. Thank you. Um, we had a question come in here. I'm, I'm actually going to put, wait, I, I have my clock, so I'm going to actually, Yay, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to look at it I'm now. <laughs> to flirt with a guy because he might not be interested and I'll feel awkward. Kind of like Aliza was saying the fear factor. Um, any advice for that? Yeah. Uh, hold on. I lost my ear pod. Man down. <laughs> okay. Hold on. They like fall out sometimes. Um, well, you got to get any, these ones, but you don't like these any, ones. Not at all. Any advice, any advice for how to deal with rejection? Is that really the question? Um, no, or... it, no, no. The question is I'm hesitant to flirt because I'm afraid he might not be interested and then I'll feel awkward. So yeah. how do I get past that? Get comfortable with the uncomfortable. You might sometimes feel awkward. You might put like a bid out there, right? You might try for something and it might not be reciprocated okay, 99% of the time, we don't want it reciprocated because it's not going to be the right person. And that's our clue. So the way not to feel awkward is to feel gratitude. Thank you, God, for giving me the guidance to know who's right for me and who's wrong for me. I went for what I wanted because I'm supposed to go for what I want, but I should hopefully turn my eyes and, and turn away from what's not for me. And I can't do it on my own. So you make them turn away from me and I'll get the hint. <laughs> um, how to pick up flirting when he's not as straightforward. It's interesting. There's some people that are, that are like friendly, the flirty ish. You can't tell are they being friendly? Do they like you? Don't they like you? So if you can't pick it up and maybe you don't have the skills to pick it up, like it's not your thing to pick it up, whether it is or it isn't, if you're just confused, basically it goes like this. If they talk to you and they want to talk to you again, then it's good. If they ask to talk to you again, it's good. If they keep booking another time, um, to me, that's a sign that they're interested to get to know you. And you might not know by the flirting. You just know by the confirmation of another phone call or another Zoom call. That's probably the easiest way to tell. So would that be the same answer for how can I tell if a girl likes me back? Um, right. So if she says no, well, so with flirting, right, you might also not be able to tell. So if you like say like, let's talk on Tuesday and she, you know, spontaneously becomes unavailable and sort of feels like she's never unavailable, she's never available and always unavailable. Um, yeah, that will usually mean that she's not interested. Um, she could be super shy, but she would still say yes to another date if she was interested. So um, you, again, you might not, if you can't tell from flirting, like so, some people are subtle, some people are practicing this flirting connection thing and they're not so good at figuring it all out but basically assume if they say yes to connecting and meeting with you again that's good um, even if their face or their tone or their words or their language don't show it 
Awesome. Um, how do I express interest in someone slash make the first move when it might be through messages? Like if we're just texting at the beginning or, yeah. or if it's a group. Playful. So I have a client right now and we are working on playful text messaging. So she's like, oh, you know, I messed it up the other day. And I was like, what happened? And she's like, well, you know, he said this and I said that. And I was, and I said, okay, practice. That's what you said. It's over. Fine. What could you have said? What should you have said? Now, the problem is if you're thinking with your own brain and it doesn't naturally come to you, you won't know what to say. So here is my secret tip. Secret tip is who do you know? No, well, you can. I totally, I'm here for sessions if you want. But who do you know that does this well? Okay. So just for example, if I'm, if I'm like, it's not me, I don't even know what to say. And I'm like, oh, but my friend, Sarah, she would know exactly what to say. And then in my brain goes, well, what would Sarah say? And then my brain's like, oh, she would probably be like da, 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 da. And then my brain goes, yeah, but I would never say that. And then I'm like, well, I could say a modified, modified version of that. Now, wait, Sarah didn't tell me that. All I had to do is conjure up the image and the thinking of what somebody who knows how to do that would do. And the wisdom and the information came to my brain, which means it's actually in there. Now, it might not be you to do it like that. Modify it and make it you. You know what this reminds me of? And you'll tell me if this ties in exactly or if I'm a little bit off. Okay. But this reminds me of when I was in Israel. And I had been dating for a few months at the time. And I went to the shuk and I tried on those, um, I mean, <laughs> the head covering things. And I looked so cute. And I had no intention of sending it to my boyfriend at the time. And I texted it to Lisa. And she's like, oh my gosh, get one. Because you guys are going to get engaged. And then I'm going to give it to you as a present. Um, and I was like, oh, I, I have to pay you for it. I didn't buy it. I need to tell my sister to buy it before they come back. I'll talk about it later. What? Um, because they didn't, no store had two and I wanted one and you wanted one. So I kept going from store to store that I never got one. Um, but basically I was like, wait, can I send this to him? And Aliza was like, here's the thing. Let's like think this through. So you don't just send him the picture of that. Cause that could be a little bit scary. I'm like, oh my gosh, are you trying to say you want to marry me? Um, we want it to be playful. So what you do is she had me send three pictures. So I sent a picture of that. I sent a picture of like, you know, all the spices at the shook. And then I sent another picture maybe with like my siblings or something. Um, and I said, fun day at the shook. And I sent it to him and he had the opportunity. It was playful. It was fun. And he had the opportunity to either just, you know, take it in that way. Like, Oh, it looks amazing. And, or to comment on the metaha, which he did and he loved it. Um, but, but it's, it, I didn't know what to do in that situation. And I did reach out to Lisa because I have the most amazing dating coach. Um, but it, 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 everything can be done in a playful, flirtatious way. And it's, it's practice. And, and I, I, think that that. That's, I think that that's a great example where had you sent him just that one image, he might've been like, holy smokes. <laughs> like she's got marriage on the brain. I'm like, I'm not, I'm way not there. And that would have been too in his face. So yeah. yeah. Good. I was going to say good job, but <laughs> good job, Alisa. <laughs> Alisa, good job. I, I, um, I, I do I like to have fun via text. If you need help via text, we could work together. It's, it's one of my skills. I like writing. So I'm a writer. I like speaking. I, you know, I like connecting. Actually, the truth is connect. This is probably like my favorite subject because I love connecting with people because I love people. Yeah, I'm a people lover. It's true. Mm. Okay, next. Um, so we got a, a bunch of these questions, but how okay. do you know if he or she is interested or if they're just a flirty, playful person with everyone in general? At first, you won't know it if you don't know them from any context. Um, it, right now, because, you know, like if you were in a room with people and you saw they just hopped from person to person and they were the most popular schmoozy person in the room, you'd actually know. With Zoom chats and rooms and online and one-on-ones, you're not going to know as much. It's going to be a little bit more difficult. Um, sometimes people play back and they're like, oh, you say that to everyone. You know what I mean? And so like the playful person will be like, no, I don't, right? The, the person who's real is like, no, actually, this is probably the first time I ever said that. It's a little out of character for me. You know what I mean? Like, so you'll you could gauge from a response. Um, you won't know at first. You really won't know at first. Um, you might have a better gauge if you're on the phone. You might have an even better gauge if you're through video. 
Um, you know, some of those people that are like showmen, like they look like they were built for the stage and they're just energetic and blah, 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 and the things that run out of their mouth and they talk to them. And all of a sudden, it's like they're doing like a little dance on your screen almost. It's like a little crazy. Yeah, they're probably like that with every single person. Um, but there are people that are polite and, and some people do have a more playful nature. Um, just because they have a playful ma nature doesn't mean that it's not special to you. They might be directing that specialness and that playfulness towards you and um, wait it out. Give it a little bit longer. If they're still interested to talk to you and you're still interested to talk to them, keep it going until you figure it out. Awesome. And this reminds me of something you said in a couple previous webinars where we were talking about online dating during COVID-19 and you were saying that because it's a little bit different, it's okay to, for the process to take longer. And so don't yes. feel that pressure of like, oh, I need to know now if he's interested. Like, it's okay. Take at, a deep breath. Relax. At least, give it time. at least twice. I, normally with long distance dating, I would tell you twice as long. With, you know, pandemic dating, I would tell you um, four times to 10 times as long. Like, it's okay. just going to take longer. <laughs> four, four times as long. Sorry. Four times as long. No, it's going to take longer because I'm going to meet you virtually and then I'm going to re meet you in the flesh. So it's just, you got to allow for more time. Awesome. What do you do when it feels like those who like you, those who you like don't like you back like you. and vice versa? Okay, here is my advice. Um, you either need to change what you're looking for and learn to like the people that connect with you because clearly there's a style that is so into you and they're going to keep being into you. Or if what you like is just not coming back to you, you might want to, I, I like to ask, well, what do you think they like, right? If they don't like your style, what style do they normally go for? And think in your mind of all of the different character traits that they go for. And maybe it would make sense if you want to match with that, that you have to look like what they're looking for. So you might have to shift something. Is it something in your personality? Is it something in the way that you speak or your connection? It's like, what is it that they want that's lacking? And if you want to become it genuinely, not just for one human being, but in general, you want to become that as a person because that's going to draw those types of people to you, then you can draw them to you. I'm going to give you a third option. Third option is you haven't met your person. They're fabulous and they are going to be what you want and, and they exist. It's possible, but if it's happening every single time and you have numerous stories of how it's just never working, um, I would expect some of the time the people that you like to like you back, even if it doesn't work out. And I'm not a dating coach, but I'm going to add another point um, based on my experience. And that is, if you find that people you don't like are constantly liking you, Think about what you're doing and what messages you're giving out because I happen to be a friendly person and I always have a smile on my face and when I'm in public, I will talk to people and chat and interact with them and I'm regularly flirtatious. Like we used to say this all the time, like I, I, I can flirt with a wall um, and, and I didn't even realize, I thought I was just being nice, but they were getting the impression that I was into mm -hmm. them, um, which sucked for me because I wasn't interested and also sucked for them because they thought I was interested and I wasn't. So it goes both ways. Just be aware of, of the energy that you're giving off. Awesome. All right. Um, being online and dealing with long distance right now, how could you tell who's serious and who is just flirting until someone local comes around? It's a good question. A lot of people have told me that they are so much more open to long distance and trying something out just because like, hey, who knows? And I'm not dating anybody local, local anyway, so it makes no difference. Um, I think the real question is not about somebody local, but just who's seriously dating, who's really looking for a partner and who's looking for a genuine connection. If you and I make a genuine connection and you live across the country and I'm not looking to schlep across the country, then... I'm still going to have to acknowledge the fact that there's a genuine connection there and I don't find that normally. So then I'm going to have to come to the practical, like tactless, like, okay, now what? Am I going to get on a plane when we can? Are you like, what's going to actually happen? So I think what you want to do is to start to, once you're into the relationship, a couple dates, advance conversation to like the, what if, I wonder when we'd be able to get on a plane and see how likely they are to hop on. Um, a mode of transportation to get to you or you to get to them 
if they're like, well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it probably won't be for a while. Like, okay, bye-bye. <laughs> you know, like, I'm, I'm not going to hang around for something like not that. Not if they're saying that because of COVID. No, I mean, if they're saying, no, if they're saying like afterwards, like I'm just not, right. I don't know, I'm not, I'm not so motivated. I'm just not so motivated to be dating long distance. This isn't going to be great for me. I'm just not, it's yeah. hard for me. Or I don't have any money to travel and it's not going to work. Like if there's all these excuses of why they're not going to be willing to come to meet you, they're not so, this, they're not so serious about dating long distance. They might not be so serious about dating you and they just might not be a serious dater. Sounds good. Well, you know, it sounds. Um, all right, I'm going to put a whole bunch of questions together, and then I'm going to let you have three whole minutes because you can watch it on your on your timer. Um, okay. What is recommended practice with regard to flirting in the process of dating someone more right-wing? When and how do you do it? How does one not cross the sneeze line when flirting by phone? How do you show attraction when you're showmer or dating, some, dating someone who's showmer? So talk to us a little bit about flirting in... <laughs> The right, yeah. yeah, I'll check in with you and you'll remind me when I get derailed of what I'm supposed <laughs> to talk about. Okay, flirting in the right wing. So what takes things too far? Um, I'm going to just straight straightforward say the first thing. Too far is definitely sexual innuendos and anything that crosses a line that's going to make somebody uncomfortable. Um, we're just talking about building a connection with another human being. We're not talking about being or talking about anything intimacy related. Um, it takes it too far. And to be honest, it's completely unnecessary to build a genuine, real connection. So that's too far. Um, what's the second half of that is like, so what's appropriate and um, yeah, what's... like how I how, how do you not cross a boundary? I guess you just said that, but you know, it, it's hard. It, right. The recommended practice is to if I put something out there, and he or she laughs or comments back like there's a difference that you got to know laughs by the way laughing is very interesting there's a nervous laugh there's a funny haha -ha laugh there's an i like you laugh there's a giggle you know there's all these different laughs just like there's all different kinds of cries you know like when a fine so so you have to know like the <laughs> yeah yeah that means i'm nervous that's a no <laughs> Right? Or like, a, <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. Right. That's like the pretend fake laugh as opposed to like, oh, <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. Oh, you know, the other day, blah, 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 right? And they run into something else with you and they're joking with you. Or like, oh, that was a good one. You know, like, oh, I'm going to have to remember that. That was a good one, right? That's a positive sign. So you want to listen for the laugh and you want to listen for the moment. Do they follow it up? Do they change subjects and like run away and like, yeah, this is too much. Um, it's really, you got to kind of learn and practice with this. And, and I don't, honestly, I don't want you to practice this with this. I want you to meet the right person and get married. But if it doesn't happen tomorrow, then I want you to practice with this so that you just figure it out. Because again, this isn't just about taking things too far in a connection with a date. This is about business. This is about anything in your life. These are life skills, not just dating skills. Hee <laughs> hee, slipped in life skills there. But, but you're going to need this for your entire life. So what's too far? I mean, I would tell you in the right wing community, start small and increase over time. Don't jump in with two feet and be like, Shazam. Uh -uh. Don't knock my socks off. Like just baby steps. Baby steps is what I would recommend. Awesome. Um, I'm going to give you the next question, but before I do, I just want to remind everyone that if we don't get to, if your, if your question is not directly relevant to this topic, um, even if it's a follow-up on a question that was asked, we We'll get to it if we have time, but if we don't, it's totally not personal. We're just going to try to keep things um, as close to topic as possible. And I like this one. Um, is what you're discussing relevant to a young, spirited, widowed grandmother? Yes. Yay. Everybody at every age loves to flirt, especially grandmothers, grandpas, young, spirited, old, spirited. We don't care. Yes, everybody loves to build a connection, build a relationship, and and create a bond. It's about a bond. If I do not feel bonded to you, you are no more special to me, and I am no more special to you than anybody else in the world. If I could create that bond with you, if there's that moment, if there's something there, then we might come closer. We might choose to exist together. We might choose to build something out of this. 
totally relevant and maybe even more so because you don't want things to get like old and stale. You want them to get a little bit spicy and fun and playful and enjoyable and make yourself so much more appealing than anybody else out there. Because not everybody's listening to this webinar. So half the people, three quarters, everybody else in the world is going to be pretty flat and boring. So we, we got to make everybody else a little bit flavorful. Awesome. I think this is by far the favorite question, of, my favorite question of the night. You love what all the is, questions. <laughs> Aliza, this, this one will, this one will take the cake. See. Okay. Yeah. What is the proper definition of Shazam? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one <laughs> the proper definition of shazam is like it's it's wow amazing awesome yeah i mean like come on shazam can't you just see it on my face do i have to actually define shazam <laughs> shazam is like it hits the spot hits shazam is like you nailed it yep well done like really well done that's what it means to me the, the dictionary definition i've got no idea <laughs> we got we got one someone suggesting boom. 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 Oh, but but, but I almost feel like it's like mic drop. No, no. Boom is like no, because you boom, use like different... yeah. Yeah, boom, boom is like yeah to me. Shazam is like unbelievable, amazing, yeah. I gauge I gauge my ideas when I pitch them to Lisa by how she responds. If I get a Shazam, I know I am. It. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Yep. Okay. Next question. Um, can you discuss flirting? And I think you touched on this, but texting, discuss flirting over text or WhatsApp. I sometimes feel like I'm choking girls when they, when I'm choking girls when they don't respond in kind. I don't know if he feels like he's choking, he's choking girls. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Like, <laughs> like he put, he, he basically yeah, no, puts I get, something I get out the there <laughs> and he's playful and he's maybe even yeah. a little Shazam and then they don't respond back to him. So um, first of all, here's what happens. Over texting, you have to know people are, I mean, you think everything is amazing and it happens in a second. And just because you text something, boom, you should see those three little dots and they're writing back and it says, you know, like they're, they're going to be there in a minute. Um, sometimes people are busy. Sometimes things are happening, whatever, whatever, whatever. It's not that you're not important. It's not that you're not at the bottom of the list. I mean, it could be, but let's just say that <laughs> none of those are the real reasons. If none of those are the real reasons, then, then you just have to wait for the response. Also, by the way, you might be Shazam. You might know how to like nail it with the humor and the comments and the playful and the engaging and the connecting and the mm, heart and soul. And she might not. She might need like a super duper lesson. She might be working with me and working on how to respond to your text. And it's taking her two hours because we didn't have our session yet. No, I'm just kidding. So um, it's, it's difficult. I would just tell you, if you basically it goes like this, you know, you're fabulous. You, if you don't know you're fabulous, call me. I'll tell you, you are fabulous. You are a unique, awesome creation in this world that needed to exist. The world could not exist without you. The moment you were born was the moment that the world could not exist one more second without you. You are a necessary part of this world. We need you. Super important. You put out a text message. You put your all into it and you're like, boom. And they don't give you anything back. You should look at that and be like, well, I'm amazing. I guess we'll see what she's got to show me. You know, like be a little playful, like calm your brain down. You're great. You did awesome. You did the right thing. Okay. So they, they didn't respond in kind. Either it's not for you or they don't know what to do. Come up with a million reasons why this couldn't have been, why it didn't work, but you're fabulous. You did everything you were supposed to do. You don't need coaching on this. You did a great job. So Come what's, what's it. the next step? What's the next step? Let's say, let's say they respond, but not, you yeah. know, in kind. Um, yeah. Then just keep then the go, conversation so then, going. And then go, look, like take it go, back and. Yeah. Take, no, th step it down to neutral, go back down to neutral. And then like a couple chats later, ramp it up again and then go back to neutral. Like give me different speeds here, you know, go 20, go 60, go 40, go 30, go 20, go 60. Right. So like change it up a little bit so that like, you're not always on, you're not always off. You're not really flat. Like I need a little bit of, um, I, I need momentum in the relationship. So like, you got to like work to get up the hill and then you coast down and then we got to work to get up the hill again. And then you go down. Awesome. Um, all right. There's a question that I'm going to take. 
uh, and you can add whatever you want. Um, but what should you do if you're a friendly person and they think you're flirting when that's not what you intended? So what I was saying before about just being aware of how you behave and how you come across, I know for myself, and I'll just throw out an example, but um, if I'm at the grocery store, Ralph's, I like this actually happens. So I'm in Ralph's, right? And I'm, I'm at the kosher section and someone asks me if there's kosher yogurt. So a normal response or the average response is yes, the yogurt's over there. And I'm like, it would be a pleasure to show you where the yogurts are. Come follow me. And so I, you know, it's, it's almost, it's almost like you work at the store and it's your job to be helpful to them. And so, and I'm just like, poor guy he just wants his yogurt. And so I walk him over to the yogurt and he's, and then, you know, he's working off of my energy. So ask me, so which one do you like? Which flavor should I try? And I'm like, well, <laughs> I promise you this happened. And then he asked me for my number. <laughs> And let's just say he was not what I was looking for. Um, and so, and so, you know, but you know what, they're all good. Okay, so a normal, a, a good response is they're all good. And I was like, well, I really like the strawberry, but I would go for blueberry second best. It's not you. I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't say anything wrong, but the energy that I was giving off was inviting and it was playful Friend, and, it was, and it was friendly. Well, and yeah. it was friendly and it was connected. He wanted your number because it was like, I feel good being around you. I feel connected right. to you. I can feel you. I can feel me. When you can feel yourself and you can feel the other person, you want to hang around them more because it's energizing, because it brings out your best, because it just makes it feel so good. That's the goal of a connection. Now, you had to learn the opposite of flirting, which is right. like dialing it back a little bit because right. like, hey, we don't want to turn on the whole world. We want to give the signal like... I'm well, friendly, I mean, but I'm not available. But but you would have to give the signal. I'm friendly, but I'm not available to you. Even if you're available Correct. to the world, I'm not available to you. Correct. Correct. So it doesn't mean you don't have to be friendly, um, but it's just dial it back and be a little less. Have an awareness. Lighting. Yeah, have that awareness, and 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 when something goes wrong, look look at that specific situation say, what did I say? What did they say? Where was that disconnect? And it's a lot easier the next time to dial it in okay. so that you're not getting that off. Okay, wait. And the opposite is also true. So if you're the type of person to say like, oh yeah, it's an aisle two on the left, right? Why don't you try to have a more engaging conversation and say like, oh, you know what? Um, it's aisle two. It's halfway down. It's on the left. Um, and it's right there. You'll see it in the cabinet. Like give somebody a little bit more. You don't have to walk them down the aisle. Uh -huh. uh, all the way right but you just give something more than you normally give so you train yourself to be a connected human being it's like basically if you want to be connected you have to like put the charger into the wall and be plugged in but all the time to everybody and if you do that you will connect if you want to be disconnected and you'll be like i don't know i don't work here you know <laughs> like okay so you're not going to be helpful right you know but you could if you if you don't know if you want to be playful you could be like I don't know. I don't work here, but I need yogurt too. Let's go find it. Right. Ooh, now that's playful. That's like, maybe I want to get to know you. So there's all different ways of doing it. Right. 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 And someone said he could have been flirting with me when he asked me where the yogurt was in the first place, which is totally true. And I, yeah, I would tell, I would tell my clients to do that, by the way, I, that would be like a tip. Like, where the yogurt oh, is? Yeah. Wait, wait, you don't want to buy yogurt, right? But you want to talk to that girl. So ask her like, Hey, where's you the yogurt? Now you want to buy yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> ask, ask her something like make up a silly reason to have a conversation because you want to get the conversation started with a little nothing because you'd like to get her number I would have given him that tip I mean he's not my client but I would have totally told him that <laughs> I should I should do I have to say like I hope he's not in this webinar <laughs> no but, but whatever he, he, he found don't worry he found his because he because he asked so. you know so. what I'm telling you he found his bashir because he asked for enough phone numbers and yeah. pulled that stick enough times that he found his girl because he made a strong effort. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. Um, and someone wants to know what I did when they asked for my number. I said, I don't give out my number, but I'll take yours. I should have just said no. My oh. sister has taught me to say no. Um, I don't remember. I might've given my number because I was, I was like, I always feel bad. That's my problem. I feel bad. And I learned, no, you don't feel, you don't give out your number just because you feel bad. And so with time I switched to, I don't like to give out my number, but I'll take yours. And if with the implied, if I'm interested, I'll follow up. 
Um, you can also just say like, oh, thank you so much. I'm not available, but you're so sweet. Maybe I'll have somebody, right. you know, maybe I'll have a friend for you, you know, people yeah. do that kind of thing. Right. Um, all right. Let's get another question here. We got five more minutes. Um, with people who you meet, who you met or meet as friends and have, have a real friendly relationship with, is it wrong to behave flirtatiously when you do like them, but are not sure how romantic that feeling might be? or if you are even in a personal place to be able to act on it if it is romantic attraction? I'm gonna say it, it's a good one. <laughs> oh, no, no, I love it. If, um, if you're not in a place to act on it, I, I wanna like put that aside. Like you, if you're in a place to like build a relationship, yeah. Um, if you don't know if they like you, yeah, drip, drip, drip. I love when friendships turn into relationships. I have like one or two articles on ace.com about turning a friend into or like how to make a friend more than a friend. It's one of my favorite types of relationships because we know that something exists between you. We know that you actually like each other on the inside and you have a foundation of a connection and that makes me really happy. So if we can turn a friendship into a relationship, I would say totally go for it. If you're not in a position to be in a relationship, you must put yourself in a position to be in a relationship before you really try to take it too far because what happens if they're interested and all of a sudden you're like, oh, but I'm not available. Like, what, don't, don't do that. Make sure you're available. What are you laughing at, Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> the next up question. The chat comment. No, I'm catching up in the chat comments and everyone's talking about hanging out in the yogurt section. I guarantee you, you're going to get an email from someone. Okay. When you get engaged, got engaged at the yogurt when you get section. engaged in the yogurt section and you met your, your soulmate in the yogurt section, I, I want an email. Sarah and I want to know. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Um, okay, so yogurt, by the way, yogurt is one of those like neutral good foods where like if they ask for the pretzels, you're like, or the chips, you're like, ah, you're a junk foodie. And if they ask for like, you know, like the healthy stuff, you're like, ah, you're healthy. But like yogurt is like one of those like neutral things that everybody's like good with. Yeah. Um, wow. Who would have thought that that, you know, guy at Ralph's could be a whole conversation piece? learning conversations. <laughs> All right. Isn't texting flirtiness not ideal for early dating before a real connection exists? I'm old school and think it's not good at all. It creates a false sense of connection or it's a way to hide behind words instead of really showing interest, but at least shouldn't be used prematurely. What are your thoughts? Am I too old fashioned? No, you're not too old fashioned. I agree with you. And at the same time, if you're too flat in the beginning, we have a problem. And the problem is somebody else is going to win him or her over because there wasn't enough momentum. So if somebody's trying to get the momentum going, you have to try to match their pace in order to try to make something happen. Um, it would be nice to go at a slower pace. It would be nice to not have that. But like with the invention of texting and virtual dating and all of these things, if there is no momentum in the beginning of texting and, and virtual dating, we're not even going to get to in-person and your goal is to get to the in-person. So you've got to get it going. Um, so I don't disagree with you. I just don't think that you'll be super successful during this time if you're kind of flat. Um, in general, I like to use texting on the first date or two just for technical setup. When are we going to meet? Whatever, but not for schmoozing. I do agree. Save the schmoozing for the phone or the video. Um, if possible, but it really also, it just depends on your circles. Like in, in non-religious secular circles, you're going to text and schmooze out the wazoo in the beginning, and you're not going to necessarily meet each other right away. And that's normal. And if there's not enough with the chemistry texting, I don't even care about the video. Like you've got to pass each test, you know? <laughs> so if you don't pass the text test, you're done. So it depends on your circle. Do what's appropriate for you. And if you're not comfortable with it, so your husband, don't worry. He won't be comfortable with it either. He'll appreciate the old-fashionedness in you. Awesome. Love it. Um, I think we're going to close out with that. Okay, fantastic. So... Let me just tell everybody, I am so happy and grateful that you were all here. Um, this is being recorded. If you want anybody to sign up, send them to marriagemindedmentor.com slash events, and they can get the recording and the replay. And for anybody that's like, I need more information, I need one-on-one -on -one help, you can totally sign up. We have complimentary introduction calls, which is like an interview. You interview us. I'm a coach. I have other coaches that work for me. Pick the coach that you want to work with and interview us. Get to know us. Do you think we're a good fit for you? Are we, it's like dating. Like, are we the right person? Are we not the right person? Um, there's five or six.
six of us to help you. Um, and there's no obligation. Like you want to work with us. woohoo! You don't want to work with us. It's okay. Like best of luck in, in your endeavors. We hope that you meet the right person very, very soon. Um, also for anybody who is interested and they're like, Oh, I don't want to do a coaching thing, but like, I like your style. I'd love to see more videos and more programs. We have, besides all of the replays, we have something called Daters Academy, which has five different programs online um, that will tell you about how to, you know. That's a Shazam product. It is Shazam. It, it, it is. <laughs> Thank you, Shazam. It is so Shazam. So there's how to write the perfect profile and your soulmate summary. Like, what are you really saying about somebody? And I mentioned mystery in your history. 35% of the people that I work with meet somebody from their past. You don't even have to go on any more new Zooms. You just have to go through your old phone books. And, and plus one perspective. There's all these courses that work with you through the process. And there's three to five or seven minute videos. There's worksheets. It's Shazam. Um, or if you're like, oh my gosh, I'm done with dating. Like, Aliza, thanks for this webinar. But like, I need a break dating detox there is a program for you and it's really easy and fabulous so um you can check everything out online we would love to hear from you we would love to work with you and sarah <laughs> um, do you want to tell them about the gift from our sponsors now or just in the email? yes <laughs> i would love to tell you okay so we partnered in this webinar with saw you at sinai which is an awesome online dating website where a matchmaker will do the searching for you so it takes all of the guesswork out of it you don't even have to search through tons and tons of profiles you just upload your profile all of your info you throw it in there and then you um you just let them do the searching and matching and they're going to send you matches that they think are appropriate. So at Sinai is for Jewish singles of all different ages, stages, and backgrounds. Their database is, I believe the single largest Jewish database um, that is servicing the Jewish community. Um, they are phenomenal at what they do. A lot of my clients have met and married via Soluate Sinai, and they are offering a special promotion for anybody who is not a member yet, and you would like to join and be a gold member, you can sign up and get one month free. And if you're already a member with whatever plan you sign up with, um, you can get a month additional to added to your um, plan as a bonus. And all you have to do is put in the code and the code is Aliza. And you have okay, to have the right spelling. To them. <laughs> wait, wait, you have to have the right spelling or it won't work. You have to know how to spell my name. So Carly's going to put it in the chat box. It's A-L-E-E-Z-A, -E -E all in caps. So when you sign up with Saw You at Sinai and they're like, what's your promo code? What's your discount? Aliza will get you the awesome promo code. Um, so we are so grateful to them for sponsoring this. And, um, and I think that there's so many ways to meet online. If you haven't tried Saw You at Sinai, I, th I think it's an excellent, um, starting point. And, and it also takes it like, it takes the pressure off of you because you don't have to do the searching. You just put your info in. If you don't know what info to put in, take Daters Academy. So it'll help you to write your profile and make a Shazam profile. Um, because we really want you to get a lot of, um, a lot of, of, uh, profiles like sent to you. We want, we want the matchmakers to like really get a handle on who you are. Sarah? Um, for people who have the, who already, uh, maybe you mentioned this, I don't know, but for people who already have a subscription, how can they get that one month free? Does it get added to the end of their subscription or does it like, I think, I think like when they renew, when they, when they have to like click to renew, it will renew and add, like if it's a three month, it'll add, or, one month, two months, three months, six months, or six months, seven months, it'll bump them up one month. Um, we're gonna okay. send you out a flyer. On the flyer, it explains exactly what it is, but as soon as you click the button to do it, it works. Also, by the way, for the gold members or for the sign up, the re-sign or no, for the ones that wanna be gold members new for the first time, they said no credit card required. Put your info in, put the code in, and then at the end of the subscription, if you would like to continue, you continue. Yeah. I like that. Amazing. Awesome. Just wanted to let you know that this webinar replay and um, details about the Sayot Sinai gold membership gift that Aliza just mentioned will be in your inbox before 11 p.m. God willing tonight. So if you don't see it, um, check your spam. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly that's where it's hanging out. 
And if you still don't see it, um, you could always reach out to us at coach at marriagemindedmentor.com. Carly, can you just type that into the chat box? Coach at marriagemindedmentor.com. Um, and we'll make sure that you get it. Anything else, Eliza? Um question to you all did you learn okay i love that people walk away with one thing like one golden nugget of wisdom so i want you to take 30 seconds right now i want you to think of what your one golden nugget of wisdom is from tonight maybe it's just a repeat of something you already knew and i like drilled the point home or maybe it's like wow i never heard that before and i want you to put it in the chat box what's one thing that you are walking away with from this webinar tonight because we want to know that we um made made something happen here and sorry you're going to read out everything that people are saying so we can hear i know stuff. what my two are <laughs> my two are shazam is the word of the month and Ooh. yogurt is where you want to hang out <laughs> somebody <laughs> just wrote i need yogurt <laughs> match your energy level to hers um giving things a chance the yogurt aisle also that it's not supposed to work with everyone and that's totally okay good um, I need fun, the importance of being energetic in all that you do, get pumped up before a first date, leave space for others, try connecting to everyone and understand that flirting is connection. Oh my gosh, you really did give a lot of content tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Always flirt regardless if there's potential or not. Yeah. Good Keep one. them coming. Good Let's get a few more. I like these. If you make a connection with everyone, try to pull back a little. Right. So, so that fall into, yeah. Go for a runner exercise before doing a Zoom session to build up your energy. Yeah. Awesome. You guys are good. Uh, good memory. Uh, don't expect that all flirty girls are interested. You can't practice lines. It has to be genuine. Try connecting with them. Show interest in them. It's not all about you. Awesome. You know, I just thought of something. If you if you're not good with the flirty stuff and you're like, oh, I don't know how to figure it out. So some people listen to podcasts or watch videos or something like Google it and watch other people doing it and pick things out that are for you. Like be a researcher, go out there and figure out what you want to know and make it your own. Awesome. Don't be judgy. Don't stop before you start. Um, just good. have fun. Don't be so nervous. Knock yourself out. Shazam. Hello. Always ask for the number. She probably won't call the police. By the way, that's really <laughs> true. No, that's that's a really good point. Right, she might not that's like so you, but she probably won't call the police and ask. And so many people are afraid of asking for a number. But you know what? The worst thing that could happen, I know, I know, rejection sucks. And I know, but like, honestly, the worst thing that could happen is she'll say no or she'll take your number instead. Um, but there's always that chance that she will give you her number. Flirting creates mm -hmm. connection. Um, and researching is a good idea. Be friendly to girls and don't be scared. Love it. Love it. You guys remembered a lot of good stuff. All right. All more right. good things coming your way. And we can't wait to connect with you in any way that you want to be connected to. Because we're, we're, we're connectors, eh? <laughs> we are connectors. Um, do we have a webinar coming oh. up? <laughs> how, how about next Thursday? Are you available? <laughs> Thursdays are nice. <laughs> let's hang out let's flirt a little bit uh let's get a different eight o'clock eight o'clock next thursday same bet time same Sounds bet like channel okay so we will have a new webinar with new information coming to you next thursday at eight so put it as a date on your calendar and even if you can't make it you can still rsvp because if you rsvp you will get the webinar replay all right awesome. what's the topic someone's asking what the topic is i don't remember oh. Well, we, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't, no, no, we didn't come up with like the catchy topic yet, but what we really want to talk about is, um, if you're an introverted or extroverted dater and how you handle and navigate dating, but it's not, it's got to be more catchy than that. So if you have a subject line that you think is fabulous, text us, we're going to create a <laughs> we're, yeah. taking, title name. <laughs> we're taking title names for the next one, introvert, extrovert, ambivert, you know, there's a whole, whole thing there. Okay, so some people are saying that it would be so much fun if they could like come on and wave. Um, is there any oh, way? Are we oh, able if to? You, they could come on. Oh, wait, take, stop the recording and then they can come on and wave. Yeah, okay, let's, do, let's do that. No, I think I need to add them though. Hold on, I'm going to stop. Bye, good night. Okay, stop. <laughs> I do want to no, stop it's recording.